All right, solids of revolution. We're going to have a revolution in here today. It's going to be exciting. Revolve, you know what that word means? Don't know what revolve means? Spinning. So we're going to have a volume created. by revolving or spinning for some people a given area around a given axis. Create a, create a volume by taking an area and spinning it around, and that will create a volume. So a picture will help, and then we'll pull up some more pictures online like we did yesterday and see if they can help us visualize. Uh, there's two kind of shapes that are two, two methods, but the method depends on the shape that's created. The first method is the disk method. Basically, we'll add up the disks. And the disks are all just circles. So we, we kind of like this method compared to the other one. All right, let's say our area is bounded by y equals the square root of x, y equals 0 and x equals 4. So let's sketch the area first, and then I'll tell you where we're going to rotate <coughs> that. So we're going to x equals 4. Square root looks something like that. x equals 4, y equals 0. So our area, and if you want to shade it, that's fine, but lightly shade it because we're going to do some more stuff with this picture. So there's our, our area. And we know how to find the area of that region if we wanted to. That would just be the integral of square root of x from 0 to 4. But we don't want the area. We want to rotate our area around the x-axis. So this is going to make a 3D picture. So it's going to come up out of the page, sort of circle around and go back behind the page. Uh, the best way to draw them is to so drawing hints. So this isn't really calculus. This is just how to make the picture work. Um, so first, reflect the area across the uh, the axis the axis of revolution so reflect it across whatever the axis is so there's my axis if I reflect it across something like that. Then draw, I don't know how to say this, um, circles 
let's call it perspective circles, like out of the page circles. You'll see what I mean when I draw one. Draw perspective circles on each end if possible. So right now this is still just like a, a top-down flat view. If I draw this perspective circle thing on each end, like that, then all of a sudden it helps me visualize, ah, this looks like, like a, a bullet almost shooting to the, toward the left. I can't really draw a circle on the left end because it's, it's stuck right there. And then, I mean, none of this is absolutely necessary, but it helps you visualize. I draw one perspective circle um, like somewhere else in the middle-ish. So just pick a spot somewhere in the middle. And draw one more circle. And so there's your art lesson for the day. So reflect it across the axis. That's still a 2D picture. And then when you add those sort of 3D circles on there, then you can maybe visualize what's going on. And it might help us see that yesterday we added up squares and triangles and semicircles. Today all of these slices are circles. So our volume is going to be add up all of the circles. So sum the circles. So in some ways this is well, I guess it depends on the problem, but what's the area of a circle? Uh, pi, r pi r squared. And so kind of like yesterday, it's like, well, I can't have r and an x. I need to figure out what r is. Then I'll plug that in, and then I'll be ready to go to the calculator. So I look on my picture. There's an r. I'm going to call it a capital R, and you'll see why in a minute. But my capital R, let's see, that point is x comma y, is equal to the y height. That R is the y, and y is the square root of x. So I'll integrate from negative, no, from 0 to 4. And put the pi out front. Square root of x squared dx. Pi r squared dx. So the rotation thing is maybe trickier to see than the cross sections, but because we added up cross sections yesterday, it's supposed to make today a little easier because we're still adding up cross section. It's just every cross section is a circle today. A circle created by making a revolution. And then now it's just a calculator problem. So you type it in and you get 25.133. So the, the end result is similar to yesterday. You're adding up all of the cross sections that are, in this case, they're all circles. We got there a little bit different way. We got there by rotating or by spinning, revolving something. The next method is the washer method. I guess we should make sure we know what a washer is. You know what a washer is? <laughs> That's, yes, you saw someone draw it in midair. Circle and a missing circle in the middle, right? Like if you, any hardware uh, construction people, um, nuts and bolts, washers, There's a hole in the. There's a hole in it. So a disc doesn't have a hole. A washer has a hole. 
So some of the things that we spin, they're going to have a hole in them. And so we're going to have to use a washer instead of a disk. Area bounded by. This is super common in these problems. And it's going to be super common in the worksheet today. You're going to start with the same base area and then spin it around a couple different things. So same base area, y equals square root of x, y equals 0, x equals 4. Uh, although leave some room above on this one because we're going to spin it up, I guess, instead of spinning it down. So there's our area again. Again, if you want to shade the base area, that's fine. Don't shade it too dark because we're going to be drawing more stuff on it. And let's rotate it around y equals 2. So my, my drawing steps would be first just reflect that area across my axis. So as best I can, that's not too bad, reflect it up. That still looks like just a 2D picture. I need to put some of my 3D circles or my perspective circles on there. I'm going to do one on each end. So can you visualize what that is yet? Okay, it's kind of a cylinder laid on its side with a with a piece cut out of it. Because there's there's a missing piece in there, so it the outside of it looks like a cylinder. That's true, but we're missing uh, missing a cone ish, uh, missing a Hershey kiss out of the middle of it. Now to help me see that, so on the on the far right end there's a full circle, but that's the only place there's a full circle. On the far left end, there's really not much of anything. Somewhere in the middle, if I take a slice of that, I don't know if this is helpful or not, but there's a, there's a washer. Every slice is a washer, except for that very last slice. That very last slice at x equals 4 is a circle, but all the others are, are washers. So I need to add up from 0 to 4 the area of all those washers. Maybe we should have backed up to this first washer up here. How would you say? How would you find the area of that washer? Not this weird picture, but just just a simple washer. Yeah. So it's the shaded area minus the missing area. So the big circle minus the little circle. Where big R is the outside R, and little R is the inside R. And so that formula, we're going to use that over and over and over again today 
for washers. It's just big R squared minus little r squared, big circle minus little circle. So the pictures are definitely a little more complicated and maybe visualizing what's going on, um, but the formula is not really that much worse. Big circle minus little circle. So I need to figure out big R and little r for my picture. Let's see. Big R would be that distance and it also maybe helps to look at big R and little r at different places so come somewhere else and look what big R is so what's big R equal to? 2. The whole way down big R is equal to 2. And another way to say that is if like Nick pointed out initially, like the outside of that thing looks like a cylinder. It looks like a cylinder because it has a constant big R of 2. Now, little r little r is a little bit harder to, to figure out there. I don't know if drawing three of them made it better or worse. Because if we look at a point on the graph, so that point is x, y, meaning this height is y. So can you come up with an expression for little r? What's that? Um, I need an expression for R. It does involve a minus sign, so you're on the right track. Two minus, two minus something is good. Two minus something is a pretty good start because it we're sort of measuring from two, but we don't want to include the top part, so it's two minus this distance. And that distance is y. So that's a, that's good. We're still not quite there because we want everything in terms of x. So 2 minus, what's y equal to? Square root of x. So the integral from 0 to 4, I'm just going to pull the pi out front. Big R squared minus little r squared dx. In fact, you could say that all the problems look like this. Big R squared minus little r squared. And if it's a disk, little r is 0, and so it's back to just big R squared. So the, the, the key today is figuring out big R and little r. So big R is 2. Little r was 2 minus square root of x. Now that's another calculator problem. Lots of parentheses. You've got squares and two minus and kind of tricky. But as long as you put it in there carefully, 41.888. The big trick for today is figuring out r and little r. If you can figure out r and little r, the rest is usually pretty easy. I mean, I guess you got to know your limits, but that's not too bad. Be careful about slicing dx versus slicing dy, but figuring out r and little r. And the rest of the notes are provided notes, so let me pass those out to you. All right, so hopefully you've got this in front of you, we've printed it out. Um, you're going to have to write small, just just the word of warning on this one. So let's let's try all of number two together, and then we'll we'll hop around after that. So here's how this worksheet is laid out. Our, our base area is given by this top stuff. Base area R. And then we'll rotate it around six different things. So the base area is the same for number two for all six of these problems. 
but because we're rotating at different places, there's six different problems. So y equals 2x um, up to x equals 3. So if x equals 3, y would be 6. So that's just a line. So there's my base area. I want to rotate that, at least for part A, around the x-axis. So see if you can draw. Step one would be draw. So draw the reflection across the x-axis and then put some circles on it. So just do that for now. Just see if you can draw it. <laughs> I mean, when you get the hang of it, you should be proud of it because they do look nice. Now, again, some of you are going to opt not to draw the circles. If you can visualize and not, and not draw the circles, that's okay. Um, maybe as long as you can figure out R and little r, you're okay. I, I think it's easy enough to draw the circles and it really helps me see what this picture looks like. So that's a definitely a cone. That's a just a true cone for that one. All right, an R. So R's right there. So what am I going to use for R? It's only the third problem we've done. Big R, anybody? What's big R equal to? Okay. Big R equals Y. Let's pause right there to figure out, are, is this going to be a DX problem or a DY problem? DX. And so I'm going to slice from 0 to 3. Just going to put the pi out front. So yes, R is Y, but I don't need it in terms of Y. I need it in terms of X. So what does R and Y equal? 2X. What's little r? Yeah, 0. This is a kind of a trick question. There's not a little r. So you can put 0. You could say no. And then you can just leave it out of the... So pi r squared, add up all the pi r squareds. And you punched a bunch in the calculator yesterday, so I'm not really worried about typing them in the calculator. The AP test and my test on next week uh, has the question, quite a few of the questions are multiple choice where you just set them up so you don't even take the time to type all the stuff in the calculator. So your answer, like that would be your final answer. Line y equals 6. Well, before we do the line y equals 6, let's graph the base area again. So it's the same picture, although the scale has changed a little bit, so it may not look exactly the same. Sometimes I shade the base area, sometimes not, whichever. The line y equals 6. So let's graph the line y equals 6. Reflect it over it. Reflect the base area over it. start using a straight edge up here. And again, I'm going to draw the circles. If you're too cool to draw circles, that's fine.
So another uh, cylinder with a cone cut out of the middle of it. Laid on its side. So this is going to have a big R and a little R. I'm going to go ahead and set up the integral because I, I can see already that I'm making dx slices. So I'm going to add up the washers from 0 to 3. So this is real similar to the second example we did in terms of r and little r. So see if you can find r and little r. All right, I just heard a great comment. Big R is constant. Like the whole way through, big R is constant. And big R is equal to 6. And so sometimes only looking at one spot, that's hard to see. But if you look somewhere else, yeah, big R is always 6. Little r is not the, not the part that we want. So it's little r is up there. But that would be 6 minus y, but y is 2x, so 6 minus 2x for little r. So 6 squared minus 6 minus 2x squared. When I write the solutions, I'm almost always going to leave them as big R squared minus little r squared. When you go to the calculator, I would leave it like that. I mean, obviously, there's some algebra to do if you wanted to. You can square the 6. You could FOIL that. It uh, looks like the 36s might even cancel out eventually. But I'm going to leave my answer like this because that looks like a washer should look, pi r squared minus r squared. And it's no, no sweat for your calculator to handle it, so just type it in as that. All right, the line y equals 8. So same base. equals 8. So be careful flipping it up. Make sure you land at the right spots. Um, this point at 3, 0 is going to go up to 16, 0. Or six, 3, 16. The top of the triangle Let's see, it's, it was at 6, so it's 2 away from the line, so I need to go 2 away from the line on the other side. what that shape is. It's sort of a cylinder on the outside, but kind of a funnel on the inside. So there's a hole all the way through it. Oops. Um, there's a hole, so it definitely has a big R and a little r. We're slicing dx. I'm going to go 0 to 3. This one's actually pretty close to the last one in terms of big R and little r. Big R is constant again. What's big R equal to? Eight. Good. And little r. 
What'd you say, Nick? 8 minus 2x. 8 minus y, but y is 2x, so 8 minus 2x. So pi times big R squared minus little r squared. D, y-axis. Again, same base area. Picture is going to look really different because the scale is so different. <laughs> Definitely not equilateral. I don't even think it's a 30-60-90. Nope. Uh, y axis. So, okay, so this is a little different than the ones we've done before. I need to mirror it across the y axis. So, put some key points on there. Okay, so this is a, this would work as a cup. It's a cylinder on the outside and then a, a cone missing from the middle. Uh, how are we slicing this guy? DY, these are DY slices. So I'm gonna do that first. Pi integral of something DY. In fact, if I'm going dy, I also know the limits have to be y limits. So I'm going to count all of those washers from 0 to 6. Now I need big R and little r. How about big R? Yeah, 3. It's not changing. It's always 3. little r what about little r you're right it's not 3 minus 2x it is 3 minus I'm going to say it's 3 minus x to start with but I don't, I don't want my answer in terms of x. I want my answer in terms of y. So y equals 2x is that line we're going to. So x equals y over 2. So it's 3 minus y over 2. So I had to do a little bit of algebra there. Not much, but a little bit. Because my variables got switched around, I needed it, I needed it in terms of y. So big R squared minus little r squared. Let's let's skip E for now. What time do we get out of here? Nineteen. Yeah, let's skip E and jump to F. Again, same base region. This time around, x equals 4.
kind of a cool looking shape. It's going to be a, a cone, but they chopped the top off and drilled a hole through the middle of it. Again, we're slicing. Our circles are in the in the Y direction. So it's another dy problem. The circles go from 0 to 6 in the y direction. I need a big R and a little r. is a lot easier than the other. Which one's the easy one? Little r, because what's little r equal to? One. Little r doesn't change the whole way. Little r is one the whole way. So that's kind of nice. Big r. Uh, let's see. do a little bit of work here. Big R is equal to 4 minus X, which is not wrong, but not done. 4 minus Y over 2, because we already solved for, for X in this problem. There's a ton more examples that we can work on later. Um, I'll say the homework for today is the first page of, of page, page 37 or page 39, depending on where you're looking. So those it's 12 problems, but it's only two different base areas and then a bunch of different revolutions. And then Monday's assignment will be um, the ones on the back. In theory, you know enough to do all of them. There's nothing new that's going to come on Monday. It's just this is kind of new. It's kind of tricky, the drawing and the visualizing and the big R and the little R. It's, it's a lot to keep up with. So try some of these on, on this page, and uh, we'll go over those on Monday, and we'll do a few more together um, for volumes of revolutions.